for a true one-to-one -one lag free connection. You also get a little guitar pick here in case you want to play some jams. So you set up all of your custom key binds here, but it doesn't end there. If you go to modify over here, you also have mouse sensitivity, which I can navigate to another game. So as you guys can see, I'm playing Uncharted with a keyboard and mouse, which is an interesting sensation to say the least. Um, it is gonna take me a little bit of, man, I, this is awesome. Come here, buddy. I, I, I have a mouse and keyboard, come here, you're dead. Now, full disclosure, GameSir did send this device out to me for review. However, I have not been told to say anything about this product. So I will be giving you my honest nitty gritty opinion of this bad boy. If there are any uh, issues that need critiquing or any room for improvement, any uh, aspects that are a little bit lacking, I will be mentioning that. I have heard very positive reviews in the community. So hopefully that is uh, accurate and is the case. And also GameSir isn't new. They've been around since 2010 making peripherals, making gaming peripherals. They make uh, a lot of mobile gaming devices like control controllers and adapters, and they also make a lot of uh, console adapters like this. And they've been doing it for over a decade now. So I've heard a lot of confusion about this product here, people thinking that it's a mod chip or it gives you some kind of an unfair advantage, stuff like that. This is an adapter to be able to use keyboard and mouse on Switch, PlayStation 4 or 5. Xbox One or Xbox Series. I really do like the presentation of this packaging here. You get a little sticker here that adds frames per second to your console. Everyone knows that. Just like adding horsepower to cars, you gotta slap those stickers on there. It does come with a USB-C cable and a micro USB cable to make sure that you are able to adapt your controller to the front of the box. And that is how it reads the inputs or mappings from your controller and then maps them out to a wired or wireless keyboard or mouse for a true one-to-one -one lag free connection. You also get a little guitar pick here in case you wanna play some jams. Now this is your quality control ticket here to let you know this bad boy has passed quality control. You have a QR code leading you to their website and also explaining that you can download the GameSir application for iOS or Android, which I do recommend you do is that is where you are going to remap uh, your controls and whatnot and also have control over things like your mouse sensitivity. So the instruction manual is rather small. However, English is the primary language, good font, easy to read, very informative. It does have pictures. They are not color, but they do show you exactly what the default keys on the keyboard will be mapped to when you plug in a controller. If you're not going to use the application to remap, um, I'm assuming left analog stick would be the W sad keys, A or cross on a PlayStation would be the space button for jump. This does have full compatibility with Switch. So if you wanna use a keyboard and mouse with your Nintendo Switch or use a, like an Xbox gamepad, you can do that. Now the Xbox does have keyboard and mouse support built into it. However, it is only certain keyboard and mice and also it is only certain games. It's only uh, works in certain games and also puts you in the lobbies with keyboard and mouse PC players and console players as it does show the icon that you are playing with a keyboard and mouse. As where this tricks your console into thinking you are still playing with a gamepad or a controller, which can give you an unfair advantage because it shows that you are playing with a controller, not to mention, since it does think you are using a controller, you can still leave on aim assist. So basically you have the benefit of a keyboard and mouse with six to eight inches of controllability and aim versus the three quarters of an inch with a analog stick, but you also have controller aim assist. So me personally, I that is kind of past a gray area. I would say I would categorize that as some type of cheating. If you are using that in multiplayer use, certainly a tournament with a paid, especially some type of a tournament with a paid prize as you are getting the benefits of controller aim assist and the flexibility of a mouse. So I would say personally, if you're playing a story mode offline or you're playing something like zombies offline with a buddy or something like that, um, it's acceptable. But if you're gonna be playing online multiplayer, probably disable the aim assist if you are using a keyboard and mouse or just adapt a controller from another platform and leave the controller aim assist on. That's just my two cents. Take it as you will. Check your moral compass and see how that makes you feel. So I really like the design of this. It is very small, but it also feels quite durable and it doesn't really feel cheap or chintzy. It is also a matte black and the only gloss uh, portion of it is this little logo right here, which also controls these two LE, uh, RGB LED light strips there. Um, which I like. I mean, obviously the gloss part's gonna be a fingerprint magnet, but it is what it is. Also, another really, really cool feature. This is the only product I have ever seen or tested that has this feature. This has reversible USB ports. So what, is, what does that mean? Sure enough, you can plug in a USB connector either way. 
I was in there pretty good. <laughs> That's awesome. That's part of the reason we like Lightning uh, and Thunderbolt from Apple and also USB-C on newer Android devices is the fact that you can plug it in either way, especially at night when you're it's dark in your room and you just go to plug this bad boy in. You don't want to be breaking a USB port off or anything. So that's cool. That's the only product I've ever seen that had a reversible USB port. So the center there, that is where you are going to plug in your gamepad, the default gamepad for whatever console you're on. That'll basically absorb the key bindings and whatnot for that. And then you are able to plug in a keyboard and a mouse. It does give you a full one-to-one, -one, zero latency, zero lag connection, which is super awesome. The only caveat to that is if you are using a wireless dongle for something like a wireless keyboard or mouse, you can see a little bit of um, input delay with certain mice that require drivers. It just simply will not work. Or if it requires no drivers, there might be a little bit of input delay that you did not notice uh, on your PC. And that kind of amplifies or stacks if you use both a wireless keyboard and a wireless mouse. Now we are gonna test that here today as all my keyboards are wired, but 90% of the mice laying around my house are wireless as I kind of have made that conversion. Not Bluetooth, but 2.4 gigahertz dongles, which are virtually input lag free. They do have four rubberized feet on the bottom, which I have to say are incredibly grippy and do keep it from sliding around on your desk, which is very nice. You do have this braided cable here. It is rather short, and that is something that I wish um, GameSir would increase the length on this bad boy because obviously this is going to be plugged into your console. If you are playing on your console, it's most likely in your bedroom or in your living room, and you are going to be rather far away from your television, maybe back on your couch or in bed if you're playing in a bedroom. And I wish that was just a little bit longer. Now, granted, you probably do have a rather long cable for your controllers, but I would like to see this just a little bit longer, but it is high quality, braided, very nice. All right, so I got the game sir hooked up to the PlayStation 5 right now. A couple of compatibility notes. You have to play PS4 controller compatible games, i.e. PS4 games on the PlayStation 5. And if it is a PS5 uh, proprietary exclusive, something like Returnal, or um, Sackboy, I know that's on PS4 as well, but the PS5 version of Sackboy, Astro's Playroom, Miles Morales, something like that, uh, where it requires a DualSense 5 controller to work, you will not be able to play it. You need to play a PS4 remastered title, something like Ghost of Tsushima, Last of Us 2, Uncharted, for example. And that is because you do need to plug a PS4 controller into the adapter, and that is what's gonna map everything for you. So I was messing around with this thing and it's actually pretty sick. So of course it's got all the common shooters and whatnot, but I wanted to play a game that literally was not meant to be played with keyboard and mouse and never was. So I made my own custom configuration right here. Uncharted, bam. So you set up all of your custom key binds here, but it doesn't end there. If you go to modify over here, you also have mouse sensitivity and ADSing. So when you're holding down the right mouse button, which you can select what you want that map to, by default it is the uh, right trigger, which it should be but you can adjust different sensitivities for while you are ADSing. So if you want a lower sensitivity, you can do that. You can also switch it to where a right click of the mouse button will basically hard scope. So if you're sniping or something like that, it's just super intuitive and it's very easy to navigate as well. You can also set up subcategories or sub configurations. So within a game, you can swap these configurations on the fly and it is almost instantaneous. I would select what key binding I want and then bam, all of a sudden it is working. So this isn't the prettiest setup, obviously. I have wires running all over the place and whatnot. We are gonna test it with a wireless keyboard and mouse as that would obviously clean up your setup and whatnot. But as you can see right now, I am navigating the PlayStation 5 home menu with my controller. Uh, let's go ahead and launch Uncharted. Spacebar, I have map to cross or X, which you know is gonna be your jump in game and whatnot. C, I have that set to circle as that is crouch in most games. By default, the left analog stick is your W sad keys for movement. And then by default, it obviously knows that you wanna use the mouse as the right analog stick to aim. So by default, everything was very intuitive. Um, I would say 80% of the key mappings were already what I would like them to be. However, I changed the mouse scroll wheel up and down to be the left and right D-pad so I can actually scroll through my weapons by using the mouse pad, uh, by using the uh, mouse scroll wheel, I can swap my weapons. So as you guys can see, I'm playing Uncharted with a keyboard and mouse, which is an interesting sensation to say the least, considering this game was never meant to be played like this. It actually works pretty good. There's definitely a learning curve to uh, using keyboard and mouse with a game like this, uh, but it doesn't seem to have any input lag or delay or anything like that, so that's good. Do a little climbing, why not? Definitely a learning curve. I got into a firefight with these guys and I died a couple times just because I am not used to playing a 
third person game that is meant to be played with a gamepad with a keyboard and mouse. I mean, not very many people would probably play Uncharted like this. I probably wouldn't either, to be 110% honest. I just wanted to test out the game, sir, to see if you can make your own custom key configurations for games that literally were not meant to be uh, played like this. And sure enough, you can. And then Escape is set to the PlayStation Home button by default. So if I just tap it, it'll pull up this menu here. If I hold it down, it'll take me back to the main menu, which I can navigate to another game. So now I'm using my wireless Razer Viper Ultimate over here, my daily driver on the PC and I don't really notice any input lag or delay. And I'm not really noticing any input lag or delay with this one either, which is freaking awesome. Um, that does cut down on wires substantially, and if you have a wireless keyboard, you can use that too. However, I he have heard if you are using a wireless keyboard and a wireless mouse that it does introduce a little bit of lag or delay. Also, I wish I had a larger mouse pad here. For my PC, my main PC, I do have a full-size mouse pad where I have a lot more maneuverability. This is just my little backup mouse pad, a little portable one here. Um, but it seems to work pretty good, uh, especially for a game that literally was not meant to be played with a uh, with a keyboard and mouse. All right, boys. So we're now on the Xbox Series S playing Halo Master Chief Collection at 120 hertz, 1440 upscaled HDR. One thing I noticed from playing around with this game and a couple of others is you want to adjust your sensitivity in the game. So what would be defaulted to your look sensitivity in the game uh, rather than just turning up the sensitivity in the application. Because if you do that, it actually, uh, it doesn't create a delay, but it's actually so twitchy to where if you barely touch the mouse, your character just kind of does a 180. Uh, it's not very responsive. So what you want to do is just go ahead and adjust it in game. And then if you already reach the cap or the max, you're at, you know, 10 out of 10 for in-game sensitivity. Uh, then from there, you can crank it up a little bit. But all in all, this feels really good. Playing a first person shooter like this that actually um, does support keyboard and mouse on the console as well as on the PC, it feels incredibly good, especially when you're playing at 120 hertz on a new gen console like this. Um, it feels very, very good. It feels almost like you're on a PC. The only difference would be for one, the ergonomics here, this isn't as comfortable as me sitting at my desk, but obviously if you had a, a setup in your living room, uh, to support keyboard and mouse, or maybe just had something to uh, rest on your lap while you play, it would be super awesome. Come here, bud, let me kill you. So I definitely see the, uh, actually, you know what? We can go ahead and crank that sensitivity up just another little skosh, why don't we? Yeah, this is awesome, to be honest. Yeah, it doesn't really seem to have any input lag or delay. It seems to be pretty responsive, which is, because a lot of previous devices, for example, the Cronus, um, with most keyboards and mice, there was definitely noticeable input lag or delay. I'm not getting that here, which is really nice. Um, it is gonna take me a little bit of, man, I, this is awesome. Come here, buddy. I, I, I have a mouse and keyboard, come here, you're dead. Um, it would take me a little while to dial everything in exactly the way I want with sensitivity and whatnot, but just quickly out of the box, um, it works, and the fact that you can play games that were not even meant to be played with a keyboard and mouse like Uncharted, I, I just personally think that is really, really cool. And the fact that this does work on Xbox One series, PlayStation 4, 5, and Switch. Granted, you do have limited support for the uh, PlayStation 5, obviously only being able to play PS4 compatible titles, but still. So is the GameSir VX aimbox worth the $50 price of admission? I would have to say yes, because newer generation consoles like the PlayStation 5 and even the $300 Series S are sporting 120 hertz refresh rate, field of view sliders, pretty good graphical performance, shaders, textures, they're getting closer and closer to mid to high end PCs. And then when you integrate compatibility with a keyboard and mouse, you have a very, very PC like experience. Now granted the performance ceiling on PCs is a lot higher. If, if you get a $300 Series S, with a $50 adapter and a good budget keyboard and mouse. I'll have a couple linked down there in the description below that don't suck. You could literally stand neck to neck, nip to tits with PC players, which is pretty sick. Now I will mention, I didn't notice any input lag or delay. However, I did notice, like I mentioned when I was playing Halo, adjust your, uh, your aim sensitivity in game and then bump it up inside of the game sir application. Because if you just up, if you just bump it up in the application, but you keep your game uh, settings at it's default of five or whatever the, the middle ground is. It's a little bit twitchy and not very accurate. But as soon as I made the change from inside the actual game, um, it felt incredibly natural. It felt it felt dang near like I was on my PC. 
I do wish this cable was a little bit longer. However, it's not a huge deal if you are gonna be plugging in a dongle to adapt a wireless keyboard and mouse and then basically just sitting back on your couch. I do recommend if you don't have a very high coffee table to set this on and you probably don't wanna be directly on your lap to get a laptop lap desk. I used to have one when I had a laptop. Basically, it's a little platform that goes on your lap and it has a spot for your laptop or in this case, a keyboard. And then it also has like a built-in or integrated mouse pad. And that would be a really good solution to be able to comfortably play sitting back on your couch instead of how I was where I was all hunched over like the hunchback in Notre Dame. Um, trying to play like that. Obviously my living room setup is not optimized for keyboard and mouse play. And for me personally, I play competitive first person shooters on my PC. And then I play a lot of story driven single player games with a gamepad in the living room. That's just how I prefer to play games. However, if you only have a gaming console, the fact that you can use a keyboard and mouse accurately, lag free on a PlayStation 4 or 5 Series S, Series X, Xbox One, or a Switch, that is worth $50 to me. Not to mention the build quality on this thing feels phenomenal. Also the two-way USB switch, that is pretty cool. And I'm surprised more devices aren't implementing that. And even motherboards for PCs, being able to plug in USBs any direction, um, more devices should be integrating that for sure. So overall, yes, I do strongly recommend this, especially for the $50 price point, considering a lot of the competitors like the Cronus, Cronus Max are about uh, 60 to $80. I have even seen adapters in the $100 range and some of those, not gonna name any names there, but they don't have the same compatibility with as many keyboard and mice. And also this thing, as you saw when I was playing Uncharted, doesn't just play the default games that were in the application. I was able to create my own custom um, key mappings or bindings for games that literally were never even uh, comprehended to have been played with a keyboard and mouse and probably aren't the best games to play with keyboard and mouse. You know, Uncharted, you're probably not gonna be schwacking the space bar, jumping around, doing parkour as Nathan Drake. You're probably gonna use a gamepad for that. But the fact that you can play virtually any game with virtually any keyboard and mouse, wired or wireless, it's pretty sweet. Check it out. It will be linked in the description below as well as some keyboards and mice to go with this and that little laptop desk that I had mentioned. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more people so this information can reach and aid them as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly, greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover a lot of news in the gaming community and industry as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.